Man, these guys are quick today. Game 3, IGV, Newbie Young, H Cup Season 5. MRP, Mike Loris on the 1s and 2s beyond the summit. Your English coverage here. Uh, IGV, pretty much the mirror of Game 1 uh, for Newbie Young. And he'll square up the series here. So we'll see if we see a Death Prophet again. Death Prophet currently 0-2. And, and it'd be nice if we did to see a Death Prophet actually tandem up with a Faceless Void. As opposed to against it. It seems like both teams have kind of lacked control for this exorcism to do work. I've seen this somewhere before. <laughs> Not sure where, but it looks kind of familiar. Yeah, big, big, well, first of all, big shout out to these two teams for not wasting any of our time in yeah. like waiting for lobbies or waiting for games. They just jumped right in. We're you know, right on, right on <laughs> schedule, right on time. I like it for both these guys. But uh, do we really have to go over the draft because it's actually <laughs> the exact same thing? So just no, remember what happened last doctor, game. It's gonna happen phase. again, man. <laughs> they picked the witch doctor first phase and the face of flight second. So maybe we see a WD ban and there's one pick to talk about. But the, so far. Very, very similar. The Night Stalker ban will come out from Newbie Young, so IGV won't have that aggressive roamer as the Earth Spirit, Night Stalker, and the Bounty Hunter all removed from the pool. We did see a pretty effective Earth Shaker early on, so that maybe could fill the role and also uh, does work pretty well against the Void, being able to kind of throw that Fisher into the, the Chronosphere to disjoint his right click. So it's a possibility. Still feels like makes IG's lanes pretty weak and... I know both of us aren't huge fans of the Earthshaker in this patch, but we'll see which direction IGV go. Interesting PL ban going to come out from Newbie Young, and PL certainly works nice with the Venge and would have some really scary push alongside the Prophet as well, but that's an interesting ban to say the least. He can, he can doppelganger on the Void's initiation, which makes him a bit scary, and also just good against the, the Invoker mid. So somewhat warranted ban, I would say. Oh, no, Jarrah copped a third pick and disappointed in <laughs> IG vitality. We have stuff to talk about now. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of deviation here is OD is going to have his matchup versus Invoker. We saw uh, with Nick Assassin earlier. I'm not really sure if that's going to happen again. Probably not. But now what we have with this OD outside of this laning phase is a hero that's actually pretty well positioned up against Faceless Void. Uh, Ventral Spirit swap, we didn't really see its effectiveness versus the Void in the last game, at least. You know, when the swaps did come out, it was it pretty much didn't make any difference because of the situation. Uh, OD is a core hero that can save other people should he get swapped out or if he's just not caught in the Chronosphere to begin with. That Imprison mm -hmm. on your allies is actually pretty relevant that means that newbie young are going to have to make sure to kind of chronosphere the od make sure that he's included there with the ventral spirit it's a very similar situation to when you're playing batrider up against the ventral spirit you kind of have to focus the venge with your with your lasso you kind of have to focus the od with your chronosphere and mm -hmm. i mean you're kind of going to want to have to do that anyway but if you don't your initiation is not going to be nearly as good yeah and I mean, I love this OD pick for another reason, and that is that we talked about how all the aggressive roamers towards mid lane are off the board, but with a four second in prison at level one, you don't need a speedy Night Stalker or a rolling in Earth Spirit or uh, an invisible bounty hunter. You just walk right up to the, the dude and have your nature's prophet TP in as well. So Invoker could have a rough time in this mid lane. Uh, OD certainly pretty squishy and susceptible to the Chronosphere if he doesn't have his Ventral Spirit nearby, but... Uh, I do really like the pick from IGV, and another thing to note is that you right-click into the Void, and sure, he can time-walk off the damage, but he can't time-walk off the Intelligence Steal, and for that reason, maybe is low enough not to be able to cast a Chrono, not to be able to get a Time Dilation off, or maybe even the Time-Walk to save his own life. So, Phoenix does slip through here, but IGV going to get some picks that are they're pretty happy with early on. We saw how effective Yubi Young's Phoenix was in this in the first game. Uh, I want to say that the chances of him having repeat performance are a lot lot lower. IG Vitality's draft, like, is that like silencer situation? Uh, no, wait, was that was that them? I don't know. It's late. It's starting to get so late that it's early. <laughs> uh, but either way, the Phoenix had a fantastic time, and yeah, he's not up against any like super hard counters in lane or anything like that. So Icarus Dive is still looking to be like a pretty reliable escape spell, but. Uh, we're, you're most likely going to see the more average Phoenix game mm. from the newbie young side. Yet still, even with that, uh, Phoenix's damage with the Faces Void Chronosphere, yeah, you're going to be uh, forcing yes. IG Vitality to make some pretty difficult decisions once the Chronosphere and the Supernova or Sunray drop. Most of the time, it's going to be all that retreat. 
and then I mean beating Frenzy from there on out Invoker we'll see how many targets that he catch up with it will be interesting to see what IGV's safe laner is in this scenario um, for newbie young I think they have tons of options I think the gyrocopter is a certain potential pickup but IGV are, are gonna go back for the death profit and that's gonna mean more than likely it's a safe lane OD so interesting decision from them in terms of the laning and I mean, I guess they have the Imprison to isolate a hero for the Exorcism, but it still feels like they pretty heavily lack that control for um, for the Exorcism to start to do some work. I could I could see a Bane pick being really nice uh, for IGV, but potentially a Sven comes out for, for Newbie Young. It's pretty anti-synergistic yeah, synergist, uh... with the, the Void, but the Warcry could be really nice. And, and speaking of the lack of control... For IGV side, Tusk gonna be picked up by Newbie Young and having the shards to bounce them back, the sigil to slow them down, the snowball to save someone defensively is always gonna be really nice up against the Death Prophet. I mean, Tusk is an interesting pick, I think, uh, for Newbie Young. The Death Prophet is gonna make things interesting on the IG Vitality side simply because safe lane OD as opposed to mid lane. Uh, don't really think that's gonna make a huge difference uh, as far as the grand scale of the game is concerned, but. For Newbie Young, they have a support Phoenix, they have a support Tusk, who is going to be a little bit, you know, more so like those heroes like Night Stalker and Bounty Hunter that you mentioned earlier, wants to be a little more aggressive roaming in to those lanes, and certainly roaming into the Invoker's lane is going to be pretty nice, but this is going to mean that the safe lane support is just Phoenix, and you can yeah. certainly abuse that if you're on the IG Vitality side, Nature's Prophet inherently kind of difficult to deal with. Uh, with just one support hero because of those treants always getting in the way and those treants even though they only hit for like 20 something damage it does add up pretty quickly since especially up against a phoenix who has zero base armor so uh newbie young grabbing the tusk uh, i'm not really sure how much i like this pick honestly like he doesn't really have that much synergy with the void aggressively early on so that isn't going to be a hugely uh contested lane at least not one that the tusk can contribute to so uh, I feel like they really do need a safe laner that can benefit off of getting in close with the snowball. Uh, pretty similar to uh, the last patch. I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure it's not going to be Slardar, but you know, one of those types of heroes, I feel. Yeah, it would be nice to for them to get a safe laner who can contribute into this chrono, like a range carry, but it doesn't seem... It doesn't seem all that doable here. Uh, a clink seems kind of vulnerable against IGV's lineup and something along those lines much the same they do want to run at you from IGV and they have some of the tools able to do so they'll probably have a set of drums on the OD they'll have the swap the sprout and the siphon but could use a little bit more control a little bit more chase potential so we'll see what the last pick is here it's gonna be ogre he's definitely run at you uh that's to say the least and does have a disable as well as a slow so certainly helps him out feels like a little under control but Newbie Young, they will opt for the clinks. It feels like maybe a rough game for him, but there are a few other safe laners left that could have contributed into the chrono, and his single target damage is, I mean, paramount. Uh, unparalleled or paralleled by very few heroes. So I feel like Fawn, it's a good pick for Newbie within their lineup as a vacuum against IGV. I'm a little bit skeptical to see how it works out. And, I mean... Uh... You always say clinks faces void, so yeah, there, you know you get that about freaking time, right? <laughs> uh, but in addition to that, clinks is a hero that isn't gonna have to uh, really need the tusk uh, snowball yeah. for repositioning at all. In fact, clinks doesn't want to be involved in right. that at all. So uh, tusk can 100% focus on stunning up and sharding the nature's prop, who I assume is going to go towards the top lane for the IG Vitality side. Mm -hmm. uh, and as long as you have clinks constantly firing off those searing arrows, nature's prophet is looking like. He's going to be far from immune in that lane. The Ogre Magi is a pretty interesting one, honestly, for IG Vitality. A little bit of control, but uh, wasn't Lion still still in the pool? Yeah, Usually yeah. that's a little bit more preferred, especially going up against Faceless Void. Mm -hmm. uh, Ogre Magi, great at rumbling early on, and IG Vitality, they have Death Prophet, they have Nature Prophet. These heroes will do pretty well in early game push scenarios, but in super early game aggressive scenarios, not as much so. They typically want to get, uh, you know, level five ish before they really start uh, fighting with the enemies. So Ogre Magi is, I love the hero to death. He's one of my favorites, but I don't really think he has a great place in this game, honestly. Yeah, I, I felt like Lion or Bane, and in Lion certainly the more popular one would have been better. 
into this lineup and the nightmare could be nice against the clinks as well as against the chrono but all that control that the lion offers certainly coveted so yeah the ogre i'm not sold on the ogre pick either but the, the early game potential is is maybe what's drawing igv towards that pick is they want to crush the lanes harder than they have in the past and you know another thing about the clinks pick you were talking about he doesn't need the snowball and it'll allow the the tusk to zone the np but he also doesn't need all that much lane support so you spoke about how only the phoenix was there uh, to help him out early and that could potentially be exploited but fun just by being ranged in and of itself and having such great zoning potential with the searing arrows he should be just fine in lane super will take a couple of shots but seven base armor with the stout shield so yeah Pretty much no damage done, no tangos consumed, 4.2 regen. Easy. Bounce tankiness here on this Ogre Magi. Uh, it is worth noting that Ogre Magi Bloodlust is absolutely insane when paired with an OD. True. Uh, you kill the intelligence even faster and drop the hammers even quicker. So there, there's some upside there, but uh, we'll see how aggressive we're actually able to be. Ignite is the uh, correct level one uh, spell to have, and he's going to throw it towards the Tusk. Fire versus ice. More fire though is on the newbie young side. They'll solar beam super away. And because solar beam is percentage based damage, it's uh, pretty darn effective up against Ogre Magi, at least more so than some other spells. Yeah, I'm going to hope it's just going to be trading for a minute. I need to reconnect here. Perfect World it doesn't like me. I'm the last one. So hopefully you can get it to be a little bit smoother. But yeah, laning phase is an interesting one. Nature's Prophet, Ogre, dual offlane is not something we see all that often. I think Ogre Magi can he can stand on his own a little bit better than Zeus. I feel like just maybe not up against uh, this lane in particular. Like going up against Clinks is kind of troublesome, but you can see him trading hits and doing quite a bit of damage. And he doesn't really need uh, as much mana all the time as Zeus. So even though he is only with one Tangle left, only with one Clarity left, igniting and then running at someone like a Tusk is going to be enough to force the Tusk to use regeneration or and at the very least fall back every single time because you're not going to win any trades with an Ogre Magi pretty much with any hero ever uh, and the Phoenix is kind of in the same boat he has zero base armor he still doesn't have that Icarus dive he gets ignited and if Ogre Magi is right on his tail then the Phoenix is dead Indeed, and start, we'll start to pick up the arcane orb soon here bottom for you know and we'll probably be able to more effectively zone away in uh, Tule, but for now too late Having his way with the lane and the up his level two. Not bad for this face of void. And July gonna return himself up to top and Fren trading fairly evenly with SCC over in the mid. Probably should be doing maybe a slight bit better, but in July, one more right click should do the job and it will. Look at the courier, the bottle, not on it. In fact there would have been no bottle because it's an invoker mid lane, but he does deliver out his ring of bassy, so SCC can keep his forge spirit up in this lane and look to continue to trade not as detrimental perhaps as some of the other more bottle dependent mid laners but still a nice pickup for in july oh and now nature's profit because he made that play obviously great for the ig vitality side eliminating options for newbie young's items and uh, getting gold and whatnot ogre magi is now left up on the top lane by himself now, offline Ogre Magi isn't really a thing, but if, you, if you're going to ball out of control, you might as well do it in style, but right now, he's going to be the one balled upon. Shards are there with the Sun Strike, Solar Beam on top. Ogre Magi, as tanky as he is, isn't tanky enough to stand four heroes worth of nukes and right clicks. That's going to be the Ogre to fall. I was going to say, I mean, that's pretty sweet for an Ogre Magi getting solo lanes worth of experience, yeah. but uh, when that angle of snowball comes in, there's not much you could do, regardless of what hero you are. I always die a little inside when Ogre Magi takes a spill, but either way, mm -hmm. super. He's going to go down in that bot la uh, top lane and um, trying to find himself a little bit of experience. Uh, usually the armor helps you out, but against the Sun Strike and the Sun Ray, uh, definitely a little bit too much firepower for this ogre and I'm sure he can appreciate that adeptness with the fire but you know he's going to be farming up bot lane in the meantime and wave is going to be cut here by Tule if he can bring this back to his tower without all that much interference from dogfights dogfights uh, I think there's a chance there he grabs the hellbear and has the creep pulled into that but doesn't seem like that's really going to be the case Tule gotta worry about nature's profit teleportation 
Bane a couple of times, but he's ultimately in July gonna land in the mid lane where SC does not have his boots on him and now he's gonna get siphoned up. Super's gonna come with a freaking Ace Rune. Poor Invoker, he doesn't deserve this. Ogre Magi is gonna womp him over the head, what? grab yeah. the kill, and then be on his way. Pretty easy gank with three heroes involved, killing off the Invoker over towards mid. A big kill for the IG Vitality side, and Ogre Magi getting the kill I mean, means you get your items up, get some extra mana, start beating Orb things Venom, down even baby. harder. Yeah, Orb of Venom. See if that comes oh, up. Oh yeah, he's got Orb a Venom a, phase boots, baby. <laughs> he's got a dial, uh, TP ready to return back to lane, and it's gonna be a really nice pickup uh, on SCC. They, I feel like they need maybe a bit more out of these lanes though. And Death Prophet, 15 and three to the 21 and 15 of the Invoker, and perhaps to go down here is gonna get charted up. Sunstrike will be there. France got the siphon though, and the ignite will be there. The sunray though taking her down, and will eventually she will eventually fall. The ventral spirit has rotated in for dogfight, so they get the magic missile off on MRR. They'll find two kills. It's a double for Super Lay. Will be able to rotate out to the north, losing their death profit. Definitely not ideal here. Bringing down the invoker and the phoenix is gonna help, but still feels like their mid laner needs a lot in this early game for them to get off to a good start and they've yet to really deal with Fawn on the clinks who's one of the I would say kind of most textbook snowball heroes in the game and if he can get off to a good start get some momentum under his heels it's gonna be pretty darn scary for the entirety uh, maybe aside from the Ogre Magi of IGV's lineup. They don't really have any great heroes at least right now for passively pressuring the clinks mm -hmm. actively diving the clinks uh, Ogre Magi is okay uh, but Ignite versus Skeleton Walk, eh, it's kind of mediocre there, and only level 1 Fire Blast. Uh, Fire Blast in general just doesn't do that much damage. It, it really doesn't become a great skill until you get the multicast and roll Lucky, of course. So uh, as far as applying pressure to the Clanks, it is going to be a little more difficult to do that as opposed to apply pressure towards someone like an Invoker, right. who is you know, probably just as important to kill off, but a little bit easier. They're going to try their luck up towards the top lane. The smoke is Probably going to be blown by the Tusk. No, it's actually going to be blown by Fawn. They see him. Wards are up. He's going to soar him beforehand. Bad move, Clinks. That's going to be his less HP. He gets trapped by his friendly shards. I don't, I don't think the Soul Rain killed him, but either way, he's down Ogre Magi. 3-1-1. Carry Ogre incoming, guys, for sure. Yeah, definitely so. He's got the dust and the sentries there. So, as you mentioned, they clearly respected the difficulty of the kill on the Clinks, but... I mean, conveniently so, Fawn rotated over to the right as they walked in, and nice ward placement as well as soon as the smoke pops, and the Ogre will get that down to ensure that they'll be able to see where the key target is and find him rather than trying to settle for the Tusk there. So really nice pickup uh, from Newbie Young, and they will address the issue that I just touched upon in the Clink's potential snowball there. So, Bot lane too late, he finds his level 5, but you know on the OD, completely free farming, save 50 CS, seven minutes in and that is what they need out of their od at this point maybe provides a little bit of cover to fran who is going to be level eight soon so should have that exorcism up and we'll have a set of treads as well so looking relatively fight ready top lane with the bloodlust in july gonna smack away at the tower ignite goes out onto fan and super not the easiest kill here dust is going to connect onto three as does the wrath of nature magic missile comes out the snowball will cover him for the stun duration dog fights in trouble now will drop do the sun strike and clinks is going to be the one to find the kill so not who they want to be feeding over last is two meanwhile though in the mid lane spirit siphon's going to be there but scc he'll wisely just tp out brian had an arcane rune so did want to blow this ultimate and he actually tps to the tier two so scc in a little bit of trouble now siphon comes through the crypt swarm ice well not going to save you there my friend and brand does get the value out of the exorcism i mean tping to the tier two it's sensible, but walking forward without your allies being there with you, a little less so. And now IGV, they'll pick up a very important kill. Jump forward, though. Chrono is going to connect on to three. Sunray is a little bit indecisive from MRR. In July, will be the one to go down. Snowball is going to catch on Fran, and he's slowed up by the time dilation as well. He gets the siphon off, but the Clinks is rotating through. And it should be a dead Death Prophet. He'll get the Phoenix in the meantime, but now you know he's rotated in. Fran's going to drop a three-man. Uh, Sanity's Eclipse will burn all of their mana. Lei has nothing left, as does Tule. Unkind. And Yuno picks up a double kill. Timely rotation in from the OD, and it's going to net them quite a bit. They bring down Fawn. 
They lose their death profit, but she finds a kill before dying, so not all is lost for sure for IGV side. The Invoker kill early on as well. This 3 for 2 looks almost exactly even in the metrics, but they get the early Invoker kill. They get the 1,000 gold as a unit for the tower, so IGV pretty pleased with that mid lane. The OD is just doing so much at this point once it rotates in with drums and power treads. And Bloodlust, again, that is big on the OD. More orb hits, more intelligence, more fun for the OD. Uh, I would like to mention very quickly the Tusk doing quite a bit of work in this game. Uh, not really synergistically with his allies, mostly just, you know, Tusk mm -hmm. doing things that a Tusk can do in any given game. Uh, he ended up saving the Clinks up towards top lane, dodging the magic missile with that snowball, uh, and then, you know, getting a couple more kills over in the mid lane. Uh, 104, not you know a super flashy score, but oh, man, is he overperforming on here? That uh, I think I was not quite fond of, and I, I still think that it might not have been the pick. But you know, when you're playing like this, you make it work. So uh, yeah, Tusk doing pretty well. But after all said and done, it is still IG Vitality to have the momentum edge in this game. They have another Exorcism. Fran is going to avoid death for right now, and we have an Ogre Magi now at level six. So here comes the dice rolls. They're gonna find SC. Vision is lost right now. Wave will get them some more. Magic Missile is going to fly out. They're going to have to commit into a Supernova. They will kill off the Invoker pretty quickly, but the Supernova is looking to go off, stunning up a handful of heroes. And Bonus right clicking the entire time. However, here comes the Spirit Siphon. Angelai still right clicking away. Chrono Spirit the dead OD. Yeah, he's super dead now. Tule is going to just run the opposite direction. A 3 for 2 exchange. I don't think they can catch up to this void. He will time walk down to the low ground. But still, numerically, for IG Vitality, they get a really, really good team fight. Yeah, net 1,000 experience going their way. Gold trade is about even, and the Chronosphere completely whiffs. They actually were able to bring down the egg before it pops off in that fight. I, I figured that it would get off too, but it only being a level 1 egg, pretty underwhelming. Just a couple of hits there, and they're able to bring it down. So, well played all together uh, from the newbie young side. The Sunstrike was nicely placed by Yuno before he drops, but... Yeah, you were mentioning, or SEC, I should say, you were mentioning the Tusk play, and Lei was that game one Phoenix as well. So, all throughout this series, his play's been nothing but world class, but IGV are able to outlast Newbie Young in that choke point, despite them having a faceless void. The Chrono maybe coming a little bit too late. They wanted for that Supernova stun to get off, and don't choose the Chrono, but mid lane, they've sprouted up and trapped up SC, and the beautiful body blocks from uh, in July's Triants. <laughs> <laughs> will secure a kill. Now they're going to go in bot lane super. He's been sharded up and trapped. Fran though, he'll find the return kill on delay, but he will go down here momentarily. No siphons left. Tries to put the right clicks into MRR. Will force him to dive out. But either way, they're going to lose the death profit as well as the ogre. So it's certainly a win in the bottom lane overall for, for newbie, but they do lose their invoker mid. Sunray definitely working overtime in this series, especially when it's uh, being controlled by the newbie young side, gave the Tusk so much extra health, even though he was uh, going to die in the end. Uh, it took the IGV side so long, they had to sit there for so long, just constantly right-clicking away at him. And uh, well, that bought enough time for newbie young to get those kills in the end. As you said, uh, because they were able to take down the Invoker beforehand, ultimately still an okay engagement for the uh, IG Vitality side. Dogfights is going in pretty deep. He's got an Invis rune. There's a sentry to drop, but Dogfights is now out of range. They're gonna have to drop another one. Shards will catch him. I don't think they know about it though. They're just gonna settle for the D ward. Dogfights in a really bad spot, but still not dead yet. Will interrupt Fondo. the Roche and Fon's gonna jump right in with four spirits from SC. Look to clean this one up. Strafe is being held for the fight. But new Young, can they actually jack this Aegis? It seems like they may just be able to. Sprout is coming in from in July on the high ground. They get the wave of terror through as well. The ignite is going to be there. Will they commit to this? The sun rays there. The snowball queued up preemptively. Too late. He's going to catch a fire blast, and now they will drop it. SEC picks up the ages, but they're still looking to fight this with the exorcism. Supernova on the high ground. The sun strike is there. The chrono hits onto three front. He's going to drop, and the imprison is there from the OD to keep himself up, but they're doing way too much damage. You know, now rotating through, he wants to bring down the Invoker, but he's got the Aegis. Shards will trap them all in. Sanity's Eclipse hits onto three, but they just don't have the damage to follow it up. In July, super, they're trapped in. They're time dilated up. The Deafening Blast comes through. Lay will drop, but all of IGV go down. The Void and the Invoker surviving, despite losing the Aegis. They felt like they could take that fight 
with the exorcism in a choke point but the chronosphere easily lands onto three targets and with the supernova on top newbie with enough firepower to win it kind of surprised that uh newbie young didn't take it just slightly better considering the huge chronosphere you get the supernova yeah. in the back the sun ray has a pretty clear line to hit enemies and allies alike, but uh, the Faces Void had to actually time walk away. I think he was uh, on the high ground when he actually dropped that Chrono Spear, so he wasn't able to right click. Tusk also somehow ended up on the high ground. Uh, must have been like a, a jank shard or something that pushed him up there. Something along those lines got him up there. So uh, lots of damage kind of wasted there from Newbie Young, and mm. that is what kind of uh, added up to those skills and maybe even could have saved this uh, Aegis if they were. Uh, able to avoid that situation, yet all being said and done, IG Vitality uh, are unable to get the Roche that they started. Newbie Young are able to claim, I think they get the last hit on the Roche, I didn't yeah. really get to check, so they probably got the golden experience from that, and they get a decisively one team fight. A pretty nice engagement for the Newbie Young side, IG Vitality kind of ballsy to go into the Roche yeah. pit up against the Chronosphere and up against the Phoenix, even though they had a good angle on the Faceless Void to begin with, you got to make sure that he's always stunned up. And at this point, Faces Void, not a super easy hero to kill off because they lack a lion-esque hero to handle all of the disabling and at the same time do most of the heroes worth of damage. Yeah, I'd odd to see them take that fight. It's somewhat understandable as well, though. They don't really want to give the Roach away, but ends up being a bit of a blunder. They'll pick up the level 11 on Yuno, and he's still sitting comfortably atop the net worth chart, but for them to take a fight here with the double life available uh to oh yeah actually the invokers they just taken down right in that engagement so they can fight they've got their second level ultimates on all three of their cores wrath of nature exorcism as well as the second of this eclipse which is going to be up momentarily here in 15 seconds and they'll look to do just that super gonna pick himself up a double damage room and they are going to pressure in this mid lane with the exorcism so Probably the one silver lining for IGV is that they do take away the Aegis, which allows them to do what their lineup is intended to in this timing window, and that is trying to push down these structures and force it with the Fran Exorcism. It'll be Faceless Void to grab a tower on the bottom lane in the meantime. Exorcism being very patiently held on to, but this is going to kind of dare the Faceless Void to initiate at this point. You don't want to jump in on it. Death Prophet already has Exorcism popped off. It is a little bit dangerous, but they will go in anyway. Here we go, boys. Right on to the Death Prophet. Chronosphere catches three in the background. Supernova goes off as well. Super is going to try to take down the Phoenix Sun. I think he should be able to do it, and he will do so. Phoenix down as well, but everyone else in IG Vitality into the two damage cores. They're both dead. And in July, he has his time dilated with length on his tail, and Faceless Boy, who should be relentless in this chase. I don't think in July's going to get out. Another time dilation coming in. Bond's going to charge in with the movement speed from Skeleton Walk. One shot, two shot, dead. Super now is stuck in the trees, and there's a bash. That was actually a cold snap. Still looking for that bash. Too late. Can't roll lucky, but it doesn't matter because Bond is firing off for so much damage. A five for two exchange. What a chronosphere from yeah. Too late. Yeah, perfect chronosphere. The you could easily argue for going for that death prophet there and chronoing up whoever else is behind her, but the the OD if he wasn't in that chrono was just gonna save her with imprison. So he tracks down you know finds three they get the supernova on top and then we see the virtue of that clink's faceless void combo triple kill for fawn in that fight and all of a sudden this game is way out of whack for igv the net worth heavily dominated by the dire tricor and a desolator 2100 gold in addition to fawn if he wants to go glass cannon which you certainly can afford to do with a faceless void he can pick himself up a crystallis at this point they've got the invoker with the yule scepter ready and set of drums as well onto him the void he's picked up his blink dagger so as good as shout to lays uh, chronosphere was on top of the uh, uh, vlads there he's gonna have a blink for initiation igv though they're not gonna be deterred here they know what the strength of their lineup is and a look to fight immediately once again they could run into a pretty important target here to the west we'll use a wave of terror don't think that was scouted out to lay will be the one to pop it with the uh Rod of Atos, they'll slow him down. Swap is there as well. He gets off the uh, snowball, but it'll be a somewhat insignificant kill in the grand scheme of things. No, Tusk, yeah, as I said, has been playing very well. His survival doesn't really matter all that much. SC is pushing down the bottom lane, which OD is going to take care of. Although, Eli's going to teleport in as well. SC, invisible, teleporting out. 
no way for these heroes to interrupt that, and the Invoker will make it home scot-free, so losing the Tusk is, you know, whatever. The fact that they don't lose any objectives afterwards is just great for the newbie young side. They can absorb that loss and keep moving forward, and that was also a pretty big smoke rotation from the majority of IG Vitality's heroes. So, uh, newbie young claim a... I, I'm not going to call that a victory, but it, it was still pretty decent for them, all things considered. The clinks. He is getting frighteningly huge at this point. Not quite BKB on this hero, but still Desolator and just seemingly always the room to right click. Mm -hmm. IG Vitality don't really have any great heroes that crushing the clinks and forcing him out. OD, uh, probably the best hero to do it. Death Prophet, not too terrible either. But in order to do that, you have to be right in the clinks' face. And that's not always where you really want to be with those two heroes. You kind of want to be on the periphery firing inwards. Yeah. And Chronosphere, Supernova behind him, the Invoker combo potentially. Yeah, Fawn feels fairly safe in most of these engagements. Fran, he finally completes up the Yule Scepter. We've seen in the, both the last two big skirmishes, one by the Roche Pit and one over in that mid lane. He was bursted down real quickly, and if he had been up for just a couple of moments longer, probably could have brought a couple of heroes with him at the very least. So, unfortunate for him not to have that, but he will have that key item up at this point. Remains to be seen whether he gets connected on by that Chronosphere. Because if so, the Yule Scepter will be largely negligible. Mid lane in July, gonna force the issue. And he'll have most of his lineup smoked up behind him. You know, we'll get caught or we'll get bloodlusted up here shortly by Super. They do have the smoke pop onto Yuno and Fran. And it's from Tule from the north. So, kind of confused as to who it was. The dive back from the Phoenix will keep him safe. Let shards and backs off as well and the smoke rotation is ordered here from IGV they'll find nothing and pretty much just waste time as five as SCC forces in the top lane the other couple of course force in the mid lane and fun will rotate back to mounted defense in this tower phases void blows the smoke and it happens right on top of a dire observer ward so Pretty much uh, perfect happenstance there from Newbie Young. Now they're going to smoke up and look to make a smoke rotation of their own. Supernova is still only level 1. Snowball in towards the Vengeful Spirit. They're going to lock her down. Chronosphere off to the side. Only catches on to one hero. And it's a death card with extra turn taking already. Two is going to time walk out of there. Supernova this time looking to pop and it will do so. Stunning a whole bunch of heroes. Following the BKB. Just standing and firing. Will kill off the Vengeful Spirit. They've already killed off the Dage of Prophet. He's going to buy back. Teleport back in. But I don't think he can actually do that much. He's got to take care of this Blinks. But Blinks the skeleton walk is way too fast, he'll just run away and get back to the cover tower, but no, they actually still see him, they'll blow him up, now they'll kill off the invoker, four for three exchange so far, and the chronosphere from Faces Void, yeah. so great throughout this entire game, but that yes. one was bad. So a few major differences in that fight, and the first one is the chronosphere just not good enough, the OD still outside the periphery of it, uh, the death prophet already had her exorcism going, the second one is the Yule scepter, which keeps up um, the Death Prophet long enough to essentially kill off the Clinks. The Clink still survives, but he's only one right click away from death, and you know will end up finishing him off thereafter. And this is just the perfect area on the map for this fight to occur for IGV. So they'll put in a substantial amount of chip damage and force out the Invoker buyback, and that is definitely a win for them in the bot lane. You know, surviving through that whole fight is going to really help them as well. He's got 4,100 gold on the OD, and and maybe pick up the likes of a sheep stick at this point if they're able to sheep in an initiating void before the chrono comes off that could bode really well for their fight potential perhaps even get the sheep off onto a diving phoenix or a clinks who's going to be really squishy if that ends up being the case so could be a nice item maybe he even goes for a moochar but it will be the ultimate orb for now so more than likely is going to be that sheep stick tp forward from in july He's actually going to run into two heroes he does not want to run into at this point and He'll be just blown up instantly. Mech not going to save him. Fran on the run. No exorcism available. They cannot fight this. Without all that much vision. There's an interesting TP from in July. They had this deep observer ward, but not one on the cliff. So, really didn't have all that much intel to make that move. Prophet can't even do that, even if it was a 1v1. Like, the, mm -hmm. the death prophet was a little bit too far away to immediately help out, so... I'm not really sure. I, I'm pretty sure the play was, oh, we, there's an Invoker. Let's go kill the Invoker. But uh, uh, the Death Prophet was a, a little bit too far away to actually make that a possibility. So they do end up getting punished for that one. And it's going to be 30 seconds on the sidelines where Newbie Young 
can actually go back towards the Roche Pit. Now, the last time this happened worked out pretty darn well for them. Clink's, uh, I believe, did not have the Desolator. May have had the Desolator at that point, but either way, Newbie Young can still clear out this Roche super quickly if they actually want to commit. It will be them playing things a little bit more cautiously, even though they do have the numbers advantage for however long Exorcism, the Eclipse from the OD, not something you want to disrespect. So Newbie Young are just going to let it sit for just a little bit, knowing that IG Vitality will probably have to use Exorcism if they want to clear out Roche. That will probably be target of both these squads soon. And in July, he's probably going for the Necro Books with this Belt of Giant Strength, but I just feel a little bit under farmed at this point. That last death certainly not helping all that much. And IGV, they are going to assemble near their tier two here. Necro Book one at least purchased up by the Nature's Prophet, and he'll TP over near the pit. And with that Sentry, we'll be able to D ward on the high ground hill. Jump himself into the Roche Pit here. They've got the Chronosphere available for too late and a Blink Tagger though. And Fawn gonna look to scout this out with the Skeleton Walk. He could be in a little bit of trouble if he walks down too far forward though as there is a Sentry and an Obs Ward nearby. I'm striking to scout things out and IGV not in the pit just yet. Need to at least deal with the lanes beforehand. Find themselves a favorable engagement maybe. Get a numbers advantage before jumping towards that Roche. Clinks just happily farming away. They're trying to uh, bank on the fact that IG Vitality have vision in the area, and Fawn will play that kind of bait role for someone to teleport in or some roaming gank squad from IG Vitality going to roam in. Uh, unfortunately, not going to be the case. Now the smoke is no longer there. Uh, vision battle is going to be pretty important. Right now, the Radiant are going to be slightly winning. Their Observer Wards are out of range. Or, okay, they were out of range of the Tire Sentries, though. Uh, that will be very quickly cleaned out. Who's going to get the initiation? That's really going to determine who wins this fight, I feel. If the Faceless Void is able to Chronosphere two heroes, if he's able to catch the Death Prophet without her uh, having the Exorcism off, and that'll be a massive win for the newbie young side. But right now, Clinks is still just right-clicking away at neutral creeps, while the rest of his team, they're off doing uh, perhaps more important things. They're smoking down, and they're actually going to get a pretty good angle on to the Nature's Prophet. Don't teleport in there in July. He's going to get rolled into Wars Punch as well, but no one's actually focused against this. In the meantime, two players going to get obliterated by the OT. Supernova, they go off in this fight. Uh, it's going to be cracked. They'll lose the Phoenix and the Void. Vaughn has to retreat, and no more right clicks. Ghost Vaughn not going to kill him, but the Tusk will fall. A three kill for IG Vitality. Even after teleporting into a really bad spot, they find the sheep stick, a fresh sheep stick on the base of Void. A dream scenario for you now. With the phase and the drum, uh, drums, the Nature's Prophet just so fast. And yeah, with the bl the uh, fresh hex, the bloodlust, you know, just doing tons of work in that fight. You take a look at the buyback scenario now, and only the Void is the one to have it. Without the BKB on Fawn, they really have no response to this in the bot lane. They still do have the Chronosphere, which they did not get off in that last fight. And it looks like that will dissuade, for now, IGV from the high ground. Tornado actually catches two, but they get the Hex off onto two lay. And that will sound the retreat from this full five-man unit. They get the melee wrap 27 minutes into the game. SCC not able to get all that much done in the mid lane split pushing. And IGV... A very, very big prize in that bottom lane. Maybe Young are going to have to respect the Sheep Stick now. The Faceless Void, uh, Blink Chrono is, is pretty fast as far as how fast you can land that combo, but uh, if the OD is on point, Sheep Stick is going to be faster than pretty much anything in the game. So, uh, Newbie Young, they have to be a little bit more careful about their positioning now, uh, especially versus. You just charge in towards the Roche Pit. They will have enough damage and enough sustain to clear this out pretty darn fast. Getting that uh, Hannah Midas delivery once again. Good guy IG Vitality going to give that over. Uh, but this time Invoker is going to grab the Aegis and it will be a little bit of a win here for Newbie. They do lose the melee racks, but they do have you know good enough heroes to deal with that. It's not going to worry them too, too much. Uh, IG Vitality though, with this type of draft when you have both Prophets, killing off a set of Raxes, even if it, or killing off a, a melee Rax, is going to be huge because you push so darn quickly yeah. once you actually get set up. Speaking of pushing quickly, just from that bottom lane engagement in July goes from Necro 3 to Necro 1. And look at these Necro units top lane. They'll do enough to bring down this tower. And in July, we'll even luckily pick up the last hit there. So 
Um, that's going to be a huge ramp up. I mean, the difference in, in damage potency from level 1 to level 3 is massive. You get the true sight as well. So, IGV looking good. They got the Blink Dagger, Blink Hex now available from Yuno and the full BKB completed on Fran's Death Prophet. So, despite there being an Aegis in the hands of Newbie Young, I mean, look at the state of the game right now. They're playing scared and safe inside their own base, trying to get a ward up on the high ground. And you know, unfortunately, for the Radiant Tide, was not near enough for a Blink Hex. They're going to initiate on the dogfights, and it looks like, even with the Ghost Scepter, they will just cut their losses as a squad. Right? You jump forward, the Chronosphere finds dogfights and super. They may get an Ogre Magi kill on the backside as well, which is going to be nice for them, but if you look at the lanes, I mean... They're pushed out enough that there shouldn't be anything found off the back of these couple of support kills for Newbie Young. This is going to stop IG Vitality for however long for making another aggressive play. Still, there's an Aegis on SC, so for Newbie Young, they deploy the Chronosphere, get a couple kills, and keep their base intact. And that's pretty important. Clinks can get a couple more items. Invoker, uh, Aghanim Scepter is done yet. It's flying out to him right now, so uh, Invoker is going to be skyrocketing in effectiveness after this Aghanim Scepter pick. Lots more damage, lots more spells. Good times for him. Uh, IG Vitality, even when everyone's back alive, seems like the play should be just laid out this Aegis. They shouldn't really be in too big of a rush. Uh, Death Prophet, though, she's got BKB, she's got Yule Scepter, she's going for Plate Mail. No Octarine in sight. So when IG Vitality actually start to push, they have to make sure that their push is successful because uh, the cooldown actually isn't going to change for quite a while. In July, top lane being stalked here by SCC. He's got an Aegis, so feeling pretty safe to do this. But there's an entire lineup behind him. Tornado's gonna come through. Blink Hex finds out the Invoker, but you know, maybe a little bit out of position now on the OD. He's gonna have to back off to pop the drum charge and both lineups. Hesitant to feed anything over. Bot lane shoving in in the meantime, and they'll have to TP back the Invoker to deal with that. Fire Spirits, man. Fire Spirit attack speed slow together with that frozen sigil like blink hex is great on the od until you lose like all of your attack speed i don't even know how long it takes for od to attack at that point but it's so hard and if you're not arcane orbing you're not doing jack and even though bloodlust is going to give him quite a bit of attack speed uh to so many right click answers from the young side of course it's only the od who's really affected by that so it's, it's kind of narrow but Still, in that situation, no damage sustained even after a blink, blink hex initiation. Uh, feels pretty good if you're on Newbie Young's the side. And maybe another big reason why they grabbed this Ogre Magi to just try to get some attack speed on the board. But at that same time, why would you get like Death Prophet then? She doesn't attack at all. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, Fran gonna opt for the, the armor route up against the Clinks. So the Octarine core not gonna be coming out anytime soon. Fran maybe in a bit of trouble mid lane. There is a blink up on Lei who's in the trees on the top. One on two Lei as well. But it looks like IG Vitality with the Aegis up for another moment or two. Uh, are just gonna sack this mid lane tower. Don't wanna feed anything over me. Meanwhile the bot lane continuously pushing in. It's actually gonna force the glyph out from the Ruby Young side. That may give a bit of a window here for IGV to poke at this high ground. Still, long way to go in these uh, in these other lanes. They do have a gem on super. A smoke is actually like not even guaranteed to get these kills because you have a blink snowball on the tusk. And as far as initiation is concerned, OD blink hex is great. But again, gotta wor worry about everyone else. All these ways that Newbie Young have. Reinforcing tornadoes, chronospheres, uh, even the fire spirits, a little bit more relevant than usual, perhaps. They're going to take a trip right under a dire observer sentry combo, so Newbie Young may walk into this still being completely blind. The sentry is way too far away to see that observer ward being placed. Bond is going to push forward now. Such a delicate situation is SC, who's going to be spotted and swapped back into a sheepstick. Chronosphere is a little bit late to save him. They will get the Chronosphere off in time, and they will burn down the Ventral Spirit, but they already lost the Invoke. They're going to buy out. They're going to try to focus down. You know, OD is going to fall. Supernova down to the south is not going to be dealt with. Brock coming through right up the middle. They'll lose three heroes, four heroes down. It's Bond grabs a triple kill, and it may just be four, as the Nature Prophet is going to land in an ice wall and lose his life shortly thereafter. That's a two for five exchange for newbie young invoker bought back for it but man was it worth it
Yeah, the Chronosphere, once again, just MVP play from too late in this game. And Link's just able to right-click away in the back lines. I believe he garnered himself a triple kill. 4,500 hero damage done by the Clinks. No one even eclipsing 2,000 elsewhere on his team in that fight. And five heroes down. And I mean, Clinks, Clinks void, man. <laughs> I've been talking about this combination for a while. What but a combo. Yeah, you know drops too early. It feels like he really needs this BKB. If he's going to be the one to blink's hex, blink hex initiate, I mean, they did get the swap off there, but he almost blinks into melee range on top of the invoker. And granted, does get him down, but the Chronosphere initiation for that reason is just way too good at coming out from too late. And he's able to just pick that one apart alongside his clink. So they'll get this tier two, or at least pressure, uh, push the lanes out the dire side the bottom one once again though pushing in and SCC is gonna have to back out and deal with it invoker can do that pretty darn easily nature profit a hero that can mess with that uh, not necessarily with his build uh, this is a kind of straight push down the lane type build from nature's profit can't really man fight the invoker but uh, we may get to that stage where nature's profit is gonna start playing a little bit more of a ratty role and looking for those fights after or, or before the uh, objective pick off spawn. He's actually looking pretty aggressive right now. Dogfights is right behind Fran, so they have a swap to bail out this you DP. Know, though. The swap is not on you know. Oh, Blink dodged the Chronosphere. He's gonna sheep up too late. They have a Fire Blast, never lucky with the multis, but too late. Time walk out of there. Gonna pop the EKB, looking for a Blink out. Right click is gonna land, now TPing out. And he will get out of there just fine. In the meantime, everyone else running out to the north as Fran My is gonna chase cool. them all down. Silence onto two, no Icarus dive here on the Phoenix. He has a gem. They will sacrifice, no, no, not sacrifice the Tusk. He'll blink away straight after Super. Still never lucky with those multicasts. He's gonna try to get onto the Tusk. He's gonna try to teleport away. He'll get out of there. They will lose the Phoenix and the gem in the end. But that looks like it could have been so much worse for Newbie. If they get that Uno kill uh, in the mid lane, the mid lane is pushing in pretty heavily and he, they probably take racks. Uh, he just now has enough for buyback after killing the Phoenix. So I don't feel like Yuno had it in the mid lane, and yet now IG is the are the ones poking at the door. And this Chronosphere is on the sidelines as they've used it mid lane, so there's nothing deterring them from continuing forward. The Exorcism is going to do some work from the low ground, and the tier 3 will be eliminated here. How much more are IGV willing to find in this mid lane? Jump forward, Walrus punch up. There is an no, uh, imprison from the west there's a swap though from dogfights they'll bring down lay here relatively easily the siphon is out on two lay as well and he's got no chronosphere remember sign of these eclipses will come through fawn will drop he'll buy back immediately here friend he's gonna dodge the sun strike just in the nick of time and will be imprisoned up and now the exorcism gonna come through and heal him to full hp they want to look to re-engage with their dp no they're gonna cut their losses here and let her drop they force out the clink's buyback they don't get any of these racks. Fran will end up dropping. And does have buyback available here. The Roshan. It's not going to be up, unfortunately, for Newbie Young. It is a maximum spawn. So favors IGV here as much as it possibly can. And Bon, that's going to set him back from picking up a Daedalus or a, or a Diff 2 anytime soon because of that death. It is very expensive for Newbie to make that defense, but hey, they don't lose any uh, important structures, and now they can still poke around the map with this Klings. Uh, they saw the gem. The gem actually was on the Ogre Magi, so he was able to slip out of there. But uh, yeah, the Phoenix able to swoop in and get a pretty well-positioned Supernova. Lots of stun duration on, I believe, three heroes uh, landed in that Valley fight, and just catching the Death Prophet, trying to retreat there. Tusk once again. Showing off his play, uh, Blink Walrus Punch, not exactly a spectacular way to initiate, but and whatever gets the job done, forcing a fight in kind of a bad position uh, for IG Vitality and Ruby Young. Still showing that they are capable of taking these fights, but I think the most problematic thing for Ruby Young is that they're not decisively winning these fights to the extent where they will be able to, in the near future, go into the Radiant phase. So, yeah. how do they actually win that fight? It just seems like that's so, so difficult. Because even I if they do win a decent this. fight, I don't really think it's going to be like a 5 nil unless something really strange happens. You have In July, who's actually going to snipe a courier, teleport out, Easy. and you can also get to the rat game. So, yeah, um, that'll show the dire side to make their courier leave the base. Nothing on it, but still a nice little pickup, 175 gold from Pop. 
uh, going the way of of the radiant side and I mean as you mentioned they, they've been able to mount these defenses but each time it's cost them a buyback Phoenix and Clinks expended in that second base defense in the first base base defense top lane they use the invoker buyback so it's keeping the cores relevant even the ones that were behind for the radiant side in July is recovered nicely he's got a desolator on top of his necro 3 and mech so he will be able to split push as you mentioned rat dota is certainly an option nowadays for IGV and whereas it wasn't perhaps 10 minutes ago in the game treants up in the pit sigil is there as well both sides scouting out the existence of this Roshan and right now the lane pushed up to this point just outside of the dire base may give a little bit of an opening for IGV they're gonna recognize that jump right in they'll sprout, sprout on the high ground but with this OD as well as the wave of terror and the desolator they'll melt this extremely quickly you know you need to right click it though and he'll jump towards the Roche he'll drop his drums on the deck and pick up that extra life and cheese in the hands of one of the best cheese carriers in the game in the death prophet so this is challenge mode here for newbie young they have finally lost the entirety of their bottom lane range racks is usually going to fall shortly after melee but uh you have the age you have the cheese and you get in there kill off the Roche without having to use exorcism and you grab, hey, another chance at a multicast. Super's been rather unlucky from what I've been seeing, but mm -hmm. hey, as long as you keep on firing off those fire blasts, eventually you're gonna hit something, right? Uh, shotgun approach. They're gonna go up towards the top lane, the logical lane choice after taking down bottom already. And Newbie Young, I mean, Faces Boy does have BKB. He has Chronosphere, it is not Aghanim, so he's pretty much gonna get one shot at uh, holding this high ground. If yeah. the fight isn't quite good enough, and they suddenly find themselves to be two Raxes down, the game gets to be like 95% win rate for IG Vitality. Death Prophet sitting on 23 armor as well. I don't believe they have a Vlads. Yeah, they do not on the Radiant side, but she's sitting on 23 armor and having that cheese, and if she get the, gets the Shiva's Guard off before the Chronosphere drops, I feel like she definitely survives, gets the cheese, or a Yule's off is able to continue the fight with her Exorcism, so... Yeah, the Chronosphere are going to be very pivotal, but they find the stun onto Fawn. They'll swap him back. He gets the BKB off. Ghost Scepter is there from Dogfights, but the Diffusal Blade will purge it off, and they finish off the Venge early. Fran, he's now in the front lines and does get the BKB off in time. They won't be able to bring him down underneath this Chronosphere, but the Supernova stun will be there. He doesn't pop the cheese. He gets it off just in time. Exorcism still doing work. You know, stunned up. He'll drop the Imprison onto his Death Prophet, keeping her safe. EMP, it won't finish off. Fran, uh, Snowball will only delay the inevitable. Oh, late. He is able to blink out. For it, buyback forced out on the Invoker. There's no buyback recall on the Phoenix or the Clinks, and now they'll get the Tusk. And Tule will tap out for his squad. Brand just enough tank ability there. Getting the BKB off in time. And popping the cheese. And you know with a nice save at the end. Exorcism doing work in that fight. And IGV? I mean, they just pull it together with solid, solid team fights around the Chronosphere. Good coordination and faceless void. One shot to get a Chrono. I think just landed on Fran and wasn't even able to kill off that uh, that death prophet so ultimately not quite good enough it is of course not faceless voids fault it is not what the fault of one person on newbie young uh ig vitality just way too big at that point death prophet opting to go for this shiva's guard instead of the uh perhaps more traditional octarine and uh, i mean you're going up against clinks you're going up against faceless void these two heroes will struggle quite a bit since you have so much armor and invoker also like he's usually going to get quite a few right clicks in the middle of his spell casting so uh death prophet not the hero you really want to go for you really have to target that od as best you can but od was way in the back until kind of late in that fight yeah it's kind of the virtues of having the bloodlust on your side is that you can go for something like a, a bkb hex blink build and keep yourself safe from that chronosphere so good itemization the ogre magi pick certainly working out in that respect as well for super even though his luck on the multicast was certainly subpar but either way ig vitality out of these two young promising squads from china will be the one ending ending up on top and death prophet they'll prevent her from going oh in three in the series so second best of three under wraps here uh, for for the night we've got one more coming your way i believe that is newbie versus c deck avengers uh confirm that with you yeah newbie versus c deck mm -hmm. avengers so that is coming up in about 30 minutes guys not quite as long of, of a break as we did get 
a really uh, really close three game series in this second BO3 and but we'll hop you back in the wait screen it's Mike Loris is MRP beyond the summit English coverage H Cup season 5 we'll be back with newbie versus C deck a in 30 minutes oh we won't be back <laughs> silence